Welcome to the Equipping Leaders Podcast Leader Study Series. I'm Natasha, a leader development professional and overall leadership enthusiast. And I'm Corey, a program manager and an emerging people leader, thus a leadership enthusiast. We are doing a leader study of the TV show Z Nation, deconstructing the leaders, leadership decisions, and team dynamics of the characters on the show to look at how leadership is all around us. And even if we're not in a position of leadership, we can still demonstrate it in our actions, responses, and in the opportunities around us. Z Nation aired from 2014 to 2018, but if you haven't seen it yet, there will be spoilers in these episodes. In this episode, we're talking about Season 2, Episode 1, The Murphy, and Episode 2, White Light. Let's jump in. Okay, we're now in Season 2. And Murphy has been separated from the group after leaving the CDC lab. And Citizen Z has put out this call saying that, you know, he knows that Murphy's separated, but he also needs Murphy to be found. So he starts saying, you know, we need to find this person. There's a bounty or he, I don't know that he says bounty, but he says, you know, there's a big reward for finding him and bringing him to the CDC lab, which then starts just a whole cascading series of events. So what uh, stood out to you from season two, episode one, The Murphy? So, like so many things, right? So um, I think my, like one of my favorite things about this episode is that um, with the launch of like the nuclear weapons and everything, right? Um, you have Warren, she's trying to drive away from the, the blast, right? Everybody's sort of turning around to look at the, the flash as it's coming in. Um, and I, I think what's really kind of cool about that is uh, Murphy's driving down on his own, his own path. Uh, I think Warren's trying to either chase him or find him, right? That's always going to be the goal. However, protect the rest of the team first, right? Um, there's You have great team communication. Um, 10k spots like that tunnel to dive into for the nuclear blast thing warren's very focused on protecting the team the mission they're all trying to help her right they're not bothering her they realize she's doing something important driving and so it's like uh but there's this fear i think that's great and then like you said with citizen z he made a call right like he he is a member of that team he's the remote member of the team like you pointed out before in the past and he made a an executive decision he knows murphy's no longer with the rest of the group he understands what that mission is so based off of the, all of the information that he has he makes the best call to like you said say there's a bounty on this guy you got to get him to california because he doesn't know if the rest of the team is there or not he knows that the mission is still the same but it's a nuclear explosion you know odds of walking away from that are, are pretty slim he also realized that he's under attack so he he makes that call and I think that that is like really, really cool. Um, we know that that complicates the mission moving forward, but like he, in his like last dying thing, he sort of set the the mission on autopilot in in a way. And I, I thought that that was that was really really interesting. I think it's also interesting to bring up that when we, as leaders, instill something in someone else, a belief or a hope the ends that they will go to, to meet that. Right. So like at this point, we don't like, they don't know the, if any of these labs are still there, if Murphy is alive, if they're like, we don't know a lot of things, but citizens, is still operating as if, because this belief, this hope that there could be a vaccination, this belief in something better and something different has been instilled in him. And so I think it's really important as leaders to keep that in mind that the things we say have weight and they really matter to people. And sometimes people will go to extremes to achieve them, not just for us, but because we helped them or made them believe in something. And I think that's, it's really powerful, but it's also something we need to vary. That's like white gloves, like, you know, that white glove service where it's like, but let me be sure that I'm doing this with the care for the people who are then believing in it. Yeah, I, 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 it's such a great point because the one of the other things that really stuck out to me is when the nuclear blast went off where Citizen Z was at, um, that like the heat from that blast sort of thawed out that um, 
playing that that's my cat don't worry about her um that uh that nuclear blast sort of um i'm back <laughs> melted some of those zombies which that was the first at least to what we've seen in the show and assuming he's in such a remote place that was the first time he's now had to deal with this this added stress to the mission which is getting attacked by zombies and so not only was that a first and like now he's really a part of the team right because he's been uh like um kind of that uh involved in that aspect right that complexity has been added to his piece on um, that he's been sort of remote from um but he's also the first one to deal with what they now start calling his blaster zombies which are these post radioactively you know triggered um zombies that are maybe a little smarter a little faster and so like not only was he really zero to 100 brought into having that complexity he got what is now that we know the most complex version of that. And so I thought that that was like really interesting too, because he dealt with that and he continued on identifying the team, trying to find Murphy, continue on with that mission piece. So um, I, I like, I really thought that that was like, he's been a really great member of that team, self-leading, keeping up with the mission. And I thought that was pretty neat. Agreed. Agreed. I know at the beginning of this too, where they've all been separated, and then you have Warren, who's with Doc and 10K. Doc is injured, and he's just like, leave me behind, right? Like, you all need to keep going. And Warren tells him, she says, you know, no one's leaving you here to die. Take the last of this water. And then she tells him, you know, I'm going to go find food or, you know, help. Uh, but she also says something really important there too, where it's not like, oh, wait for till I get back. She says, if I'm not back in 48 hours, you're on your own. And I think that that's also like really important to be like, people will wait. We'll wait for team members, whether you're the leader or not, we'll wait. So you give people this realistic timeline of how long should they be waiting before it's on them to make a decision and not just be like, they're not back. Should we just make the decision? It's like, hey, wait this long. And, and I think that there's that's something I appreciate about Warren's leadership is just that clarity that's there so often where it's like, I can't do all the things and I may not return. So you're on your own at this point. Yeah. And I'm trying to think, does the team know yet that that bounty was called out by citizen Z? No, I, yeah. So, I mean, that's like, I I think that that's going to be like, that's really interesting too, because they're still making like a lot of really great decisions or Warren's really making a lot of great decisions for the team. She's given that clear cut guidance and she's operating with the information that she has, which is she doesn't know that now he's like one of the most popular men in the apocalypse. Um, so um, I think that that's, that's pretty, um, pretty telling. And like the foreshadowing for that is going to be interesting about how they deal with it as a leader. But um, Murphy's also now like rogue and on his own. And I, he's like walking through that, like, clothing store or whatever and now that's where that one guy shows up and it's like oh you're blue that means you're probably the murphy right and i'm gonna kidnap you uh and so i i think that's really cool because murphy now is aware very quickly that everybody's after him and it sort of plays into that um him sort of perceiving himself seeing the victim of the apocalypse almost like it, it just further confirms that. And I think it empowers him more to be like, he made the right decision by leaving the group. And I thought that was kind mm. of interesting is like, sometimes you, you know, best intentions, you can confirm somebody's worst suspicions. Well, yeah, it's confirmation bias, right? Yep. So yeah. It's like, yeah. It's I'm only looking for the things that are going to confirm what I believe. And yes. Another thing too, is so we have that people kind of, like I said, people are going forward based on what the leader said. We also have this thing where Mac and Addy are back in the picture. They're back together. And Addy's try, they're trying to build that signal to get a hold of somebody, Citizen Z, presumably. But Mac and Addy are having an argument about like why they're even doing that, why they're even trying to find the others. And I think Mac says something really telling, which I think is kind of the other side of this hope piece where when she says you know why are we still trying to get in contact with Warren and the others and he says there's nothing else to do so I think there's that piece too where sometimes it's like if people don't have a direction and you give them one they'll go in the direction because there's nothing else to do so I think that's like kind of another important element of leadership that was 
shown in this too, where it's like, what else would I be doing? Yeah. No, that's, that's, I, I didn't even know. I like missed that part, but now that you say it, that, that does stick out. Cause that's also like, you know, when you're looking as a leader, like you, you obviously have those main goals, but nothing's ever going to happen perfectly. And you're always going to have that downtime. And so like, if you want people to maintain productivity, you know, understanding, you know, either technical debt or like that maintenance, that other stuff, right? Like there's those little things that you can be doing and making sure those are like well-documented and pointed out and, and can be tracked. Like, I think that's really important for team members is to make sure that when they're waiting on something else or, or they're stuck on somebody else to give them that other task to do, because I, you know, also having nothing makes the day go by so much slower. And so always having that little something can make it go a little quicker. So that's, yeah, I didn't even, I didn't even pick up on that, but going off of the last, last goal, you know, and just still working with that. Yeah. That's, that's genius. I missed that. So then Warren, she is, she's collapsed on the ground. She is about to mercy herself because no food, you know, she knows she's about to die. She doesn't want to become a zombie. And then she hears this cry for help. So again, I think this is the piece that it's like some people run towards a cry for help and some people run away from it. And Warren is a run to it type of person. But I think, and, and neither one is right or wrong. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. That's just, it's just a personality to, or it's just a, an internal drive that we can or cannot control based on a lot of different things uh, that we cannot control based on a lot of different things. So her call to run towards it though, I think is so interesting because then it's like she had nothing, but that call for help suddenly gave her this adrenaline rush, this rush of what she needed to help this kid that was, you know, being attacked by zombies. And I think that that's really important because I think of people like David Goggins or kind of other people like that who there is this drive in them. And it's like, how do you define that for someone else? Because people are like, oh, we want to replicate that. And it's like, how do you replicate that? You can't. It is in them that it's like, I'm going to do this thing. That's who I am, no matter what happens. And so I think that in that moment, we saw that that was, we already know Warren's amazing. But it was like, in that moment, we saw that like, she is about to mercy herself. She is dying. Right? She's uh you know, half a step away from death, but who she is, is a person who helps other people. And so it also just kind of attests to like, who are the greatest leaders, right? Are they the ones who build the biggest buildings or build the biggest organizations? Or are they the ones who help the most people? Yeah, I, you know, it's such a, such a good, like such a good point. But I, I also think it's interesting too now is, organization that she's in which is you know her doc 10k addy everybody like that that organizational goal is to help people as well right so like her own internal drivers align directly with that group's goals and you know like you said would she be successful if she was in another group that that wasn't the same probably not so i think that that's that's a really interesting really interesting thing Interesting, because I think uh, I disagree. I think she ah. would. <laughs> I know. I, I think that she would be successful because of that internal drive. Just because she didn't hear, it wasn't someone from her group asking for help. It was some random other person. Oh no! Yeah, absolutely. But it, it was a person needing help, right? So she just wants to do good. Like she wants good people to be good. So yeah, I guess no. You're you're right. I, I when you say it like that, you're absolutely right. But that's that's a great point. I also, what's interesting too, though, is. Um, you start to see Murphy as a team member as well. He's always trying to like carve out his own little thing. So like now he finds like that um, bar and he's like, this is good. I can make this my own. And so I think, uh, you know, as a team member, you know, you, you start to get flashes of that as well as with, um, you know, Warren kind of explaining some of her motivations. But I was wondering like you as a leader, like if you if you have a member of your team where it's it's apparent that that person I wouldn't even say that Murphy has leadership aspirations he but he has like uh, he has a drive for like self autonomy so it's like how do you 
how do you lead and how do you help that person be successful, right? Like if you're able to identify that as what that team member needs, what, like, what, what would you say are like some of the ways that you can meet that goal for them? Well, you said it so perfectly just now where you said he's trying to carve out his own thing. And it's because he knows he's part of this group. He knows he has this skill that other people don't have, but he has no idea how he fits into this group and how that works. So I think that as leaders, kind of going back to that, like being able to communicate very clearly and stuff, like someone's role and why it's important to the team, why it's important to the organization. If you can go bigger than that, then definitely do without, you know, you don't want to blow smoke. But at the same time, it's like really letting people know that like, what they bring, what they uniquely bring is so valuable. And here's why. And that even when things are bad, like if a difficult conversation needs to be had, we're in this together. Like you're here for a reason, a very important reason, which is, you know, these pieces, we're going to work through this. So I think that when you see a team member who is just not who is doing that, like they're fighting for a reason, right? There is a fight there that it's not that people wake up and they're like, let's make the leader's job as complicated as possible, right? That's not most people. So if they're fighting, it's your responsibility, I believe as a leader to get to the bottom of like, what is it that they feel like they don't belong here? And like you said, with Murphy, he's trying to figure out his own thing. He has been along for the ride unwillingly this whole time. And so now if they can find this place where it's like, oh, this is yours, like this is your piece, this is your lane, your piece of the pie that's still part of all of this, I think that that would be incredibly helpful. Now in their situation, they're not in a place to do that. But for most of us, we are in a situation where it's like, yeah, communicate clearly. And if people aren't happy, it's also, I believe, our responsibility to, we can't make people happy. That's an impossible thing to try to attain. But like Sidney Finkelstein has this concept of super bosses where it's basically a flow of talent. So if someone's happy where they are, that's great, right? We still develop them, make sure they have the resources they need and all that. But if you know, somebody has other aspirations, help to help them to network into that next thing, into that next position, because yes, you would lose that person from your team, but it's not losing that person from their team because you as a leader know, you know how to develop talent. So whoever's next, you can develop them too, right? So it's this confidence piece on behalf of leaders too that I think is sometimes missing when you have somebody who just always seems to go rogue because it's always really annoying to me when people are like, act like that's a personality trait. They're like, oh, they always go rogue. It's like, oh, that person's always late. And you're like, that's not a thing, right? Like you need to, there's certain things you need to do for the team. But if you do have somebody who truly is just doing that fight, it's like, they don't understand what, not like what their place is in a negative way, but like they don't understand what their contribution is and why they're valuable. That's that's really great. That's really great, like really great points. I guess, you know, the super boss thing too is interesting to me because like the preparing someone else for like that next that next piece, right? And, and getting them, you know, in that place. I think that's such a foreign concept to me as well that mm-hmm. it, it's not part of the culture for where I tend to, um, you know, uh, work that it, it's, it's a non-existent thought, right? So it's like a write-off and it's one of those things where it's like, how do you start to incorporate that as well? But um, I, you know, so yeah, good point, but yes. So for the sake of moving forward, while I just have these little uh, crises of thoughts, uh, you know, in my side brain, I was going to say, I am, um, Something that that also stuck out to me is the as the team like find its way like finds its way back together. So like um, Addie Mackett found by 10K and Doc, um, they regroup. They end up you know finding Warren. Uh, so they're all together minus uh, Murphy, right? That's their goal is to look for him. What I thought was really interesting is um, they separated. They were doing different things. In some cases, they were doing things unbeknownst to other other members of the team right like they didn't know where Addie and mac were uh what they were doing like the other folks um they got back together and the mission came back you know what i mean it was, it was more like they left work on friday and had the weekend and came back on monday like as if nothing ever happened and i thought that that's like really interesting for the team because it, obviously it wasn't a weekend obviously there was a lot that happened 
that affected that. But the team is is really reaching that like performing stage of being really like well hashed out. And Warren has been so clear about the goals um, that it really makes it easy. And also now when they do the adjustment to it's no longer take Murphy to California, it's fine Murphy to take Murphy to California. That's not a big deal, right? Like, yes, there's some griping and some frustration, but it's like it, it's it's pretty easy just to continue to execute and look for him. Well, and I think you brought up a good point, too, where it's, you know, as like partying for the weekend and coming back together. And in this situation, a lot happened. A lot happens to people outside of work and so i think that we need to be really compassionate to that but like you said it's the we know what the mission is warren is clear on different things so when we do come back together we know what it is that we're doing here right we're still working through forward on this transaction if you will and so i i think it, that's i liked that call out because that's so important to remember they're like people can only compartmentalize you only have so many compartments to compartmentalize things you don't leave things at home when you're at work. You don't leave work at home or work at work when you're at home. That's just not how the brain works. Some people can do that fine, but it shouldn't be a requirement because all those things can make each other better and stronger. But at the same time to respect that, like people's lives, like they have whole lives and they're not just there. And while they're at work, they do the leader development and they facilitate these classes and that's who they are. It's like, no, people are, have much more depth. So to realize that when you're not seeing people, people are going through some stuff. Yeah. I, you know, and then what I, I think is interesting too, is when they find Murphy and I really want your, your thoughts and feedback on this, cause that whole thing. So they find Murphy in that, um, like that bar area, uh, and where he's trying to make his own little thing. And, um, you know, Warren's like, they walk in and he's like, ah, oh, blah, blah, blah. Good to see you guys. And Warren's like, we need to get you to California. And Murphy's like, I, about that right like i don't buy it i don't know if this i think he's like you know that whole like save humanity thing i don't know if it's worth it you know what i mean so um and then you have doc kind of come in and now you have them trying to he's lost sight of the goals or no longer agrees with the goal and now you have the team working together to make him buy back in and so like i think that that's super interesting because losing like losing sight or buying of the mission is something that I see people do consistently within my organizations, right? They get bored with it. They decide it's not what they thought it was. We do nothing to adjust our goals and we do nothing to try to gain their buyback. What we do instead is just say, thanks for playing for the amount of time that you played. Have a nice life. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's something to me that the, I realize that Murphy is also the root of the mission. I thought that there was like some really great points is they were throwing stuff out there, very broad strokes to try to see where he might buy back in. And like, I don't know what, I don't know what your viewpoints were of that. Cause Warren, in my opinion, was very much like, got it, but we're going to California, right? Like that's, you, you gotta, got it. You don't like it, but you gotta go to California. So I thought that was interesting. Yes. So I think doc did something that I always encourage leaders to do uh, in this situation. Well, Doc is doing in this situation that I encourage leaders to do in the real world. <laughs> and that is, like you said, Warren was like, I understand that you don't like this. This is what we're doing, right? Like that, that's what it is. There's no argument, like there's no place for other things. Like that's what it is. But Doc came in and he says, if you won't do it for humanity, do it for yourself, right? Have you looked in the mirror lately? And so he's just talking about how he doesn't look like he's doing well. And so oftentimes when someone is giving feedback or coaching or anything like that, I always tell them that like, you have to outline the importance and don't just do it from like, oh, it's for the good of the company because maybe they don't care about that. So maybe that's fine. The company's gonna be fine without me though, right? Bye. So it's really about like, how is this important to them? How does this impact you? Like them, you, the team. And if it's appropriate, you can go broader than that. Again, without blowing smoke, but it's like, Doc, in that moment, he was like, we know why it's important for humanity. Got it. Super big mission. But let, let's just like refocus here. And maybe if you don't care about those things, you do care about yourself. So, you know, if you won't do it for them, then do it for you. Yeah, no, I guess that's a good point, right? Making sure that they understand the, the like the what's in it for them piece of it too, I guess is very important. But then, because I also think it's interesting is like Murphy hears all that and it's kind of like, Matt, 
And then it's also like, but look at this great thing I've been doing that has nothing to do with our mission, but I think is really neat. And I also thought it was funny that the team sort of like, um, like humored that, right? So like he, he you know, made a show with his, because he can control the zombies now. So he made like a little show and wanted everybody to watch it. And everybody just sat there and watched it. And it was like super weird because they're zombies that can eat them as humans. And like, I thought that that was super interesting that they sort of entertained his like folly almost. And I was like, I think that there's, you can reach a point where that is now detrimental, right? But like, but I just thought it was super interesting that they were like, they gave him like, you know, the old college try of like, if you really think like staying here and doing this whole thing is the right answer, great, let's, let's, you know, well, let's see why this is so great. And I just thought that was really kind of an interesting team thing, because I think we always run into that guy, it tends to be me, right? that just has the random off the wall idea of like, this is how we're going to make a billion dollars, or this is how we're going to have, take this eight hours of work and, and we're going to automate it down to two minutes. And then we can just sit here and play video games. Never works out. Spoiler alert. But I thought that that was, pre that was pretty neat. I, I could definitely see myself in Murphy's shoes at that point. I think that there is an opportunity to, within a team to indulge someone's idea, even if it doesn't seem to be, going along with what you think is supposed to happen just because you never know a what you'll learn about the individual but also b what maybe a good idea could come from that and so yeah there's this element of just be a supportive team member now not to the ends of the earth right not to the detriment of other things but okay like yeah let's let's hear it out they knew it wasn't actually going to be anything for them you know or for what they were trying to do but at the same time, it also shows that like care of a team member where you're like, okay, that was cool. But Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing. See, but you know, on the like, and then on the other hand, not to cut you off, you good. I know you tend to sympathize with Murphy. I kind of think he's sort of a uh, not the greatest guy in the world. You know what I mean? Um, he did that under like false pretenses. He is now aware. People are hunting him and he's got a generator running and music and lights and all this other stuff. The team is unaware that anyone knows he's valuable and like he's drawing this attention. And I think it's very unfair to the safety of the group because they placed mm -hmm. his safety. So, uh, you know, as being paramount and he's not returning that in kind and not that everything mm -hmm. always has to be like for like, but like, especially in this situation of zombie apocalypse, they've been very good about keeping you safe and you're not letting them do that anymore. And you're actually putting them in more danger. And that's kind of like, uh, that's not chill vibes as my generation likes to say. That is a really excellent point. Uh, also, thank you for the call out that I do tend to over sympathize. With Murphy. <laughs> Postal fraud, Natasha. That's a federal crime. <laughs> No, you're absolutely right. And I hadn't thought about that at all. Just like, like that great point that they don't know about the whole Citizen Z thing yet. He does. And yeah, and you're right. He was uh, endangering the whole... Good point, Corey. <laughs> it was so good. Because <laughs> it's selfish, right? It was it selfish. Is. Look at this cool thing that I made. You know, it just he left all the little the devils in the details, as they say. He left all of that out of it. And so they weren't like, uh, you know, normally they do their little security thing and people are watching. Nobody was doing that. They had their, you know, um, uh, back to the door type. So like from a physical security perspective, they were in a terrible place and they could have very easily done both. Right. But it, I don't maybe. And then maybe now to take his side, maybe he didn't trust them enough to listen if they knew that there was something else. Like he didn't think that his idea would bust past the value of that thing and he made a bad assessment or, or what but yeah it was just that whole thing but yeah postal fraud federal crime just <laughs> keep that in mind <laughs> but then this is also where they do learn that yeah and they learn it through uh vasquez yep. who comes in and now we it's interesting because the emergence of this new character on the show how this person evolves with the team, I think, starts to get really interesting. 
Yeah, and I what's also interesting is like this uh, this episode, right? Then just sort of very quickly flows um into the next one, right? And and so like you know when you talk about like moving on, that's like now we know Murphy's being hunted, um, and the bounty's out on him. People know where he is at this point, and now we spend this entire next episode of dealing with a lot of external forces that are now it's it's now it's become competition right so it's people that have maybe not the same motivators but have the same end state goal as us and i thought that that was really interesting because now warren has to deal with um competition right so there's a lot more factors that come into play yes so jumping into season two episode two white light there is what I appreciate too about what you just said is there are a lot of different ways to go about getting something done. And sometimes it can be the same problem and some people are going to go at it with a hammer and some people are going to go at it with a scalpel, but there's all different ways to go about doing it. And so like where Warren and her team have had this thing of like, come on Murphy, like, like they haven't necessarily humanized him all the way, but they haven't completely dehumanized him. Like some of the groups are talking about where they're like, oh yeah, crush his knees and his feet so he can't walk, (laughs) you know, and then we'll take him. So not obviously that extreme. Um, And so, yeah, you're right. And and then there's also this element of just competition in the workplace where it's not, doesn't need to be like super aggressive, like obviously not as crazy as this, but at the same time, there is that competition of, is my idea, am I pushing my project and my idea as far as it can go and can it survive the challenge of having other people coming at it? Cause sometimes that's what kills a really good project. It's just too many other things coming at it, too many competing ambitions, if you will. Yeah, no, I, you know, that's, that's a really great point. The other thing, and this is a bit, uh, a bit heady. So stick with me on this one. Okay. is I think what's interesting is because you now have the goal is get Murphy to California, right? Now you have several different groups that want to get Murphy to California and Warren. And, and I think there's like a good and a bad. And I think it depends, right? Some like you were saying, they have lost Murphy like six times at this point. He's either run away or something else breaking his kneecaps and his ankles so that he can't run away valid idea because they if you look at their historical trends with murphy and dealing with this move they've lost him a lot so that's a valid idea when you look at some of the other things in some of the like um how they're going to attempt to capture murphy right some people are trying nets some people are you know using a lot of force other people are like let's wait for these other groups to fight it out and then we'll just fight the winner you know, in that we can stay. But like, I think it's interesting that Warren and the group as a whole, they sort of discredit all those other ideas and are so hyper-focused on their way of getting Murphy to California is the right way and it's the only way. And I, like, this whole scene was like really interesting to me that nobody, like they never took into consideration those other um, options and and viewed them out as, as valid. I get not super humane to break someone's knees and ankles, but like uh, that's what I said, a little heady. But that I, that is what is most interesting to me is you are now seeing other organizations, other groups, other leadership styles attempt the same process. And so what can you take away from that? Mm, yeah, absolutely. And I think there's, there's so much good. So this is a heavy episode too, I think yeah. for a lot of reasons. Um, yeah. So then they're in the hotel. So they're looking for Murphy. <laughs> classic (laughs) Addie is almost overtaken by a zombie and so she calls for Mac and what I really appreciated about this scene though was they deal with zombies all the time Addie can kill a zombie like she's totally badass right so she can do this but it just is like even though we deal with things regularly they can still surprise us right and so what I appreciated about that was it was like you ask for help And so I think that a lot of people think 
this is my job. This is what I do. This is what I'm paid to do. If I ask for help, that shows that I can't do my job. It shows that I'm weak. It shows these different things when it doesn't, right? It just sometimes something surprises us. And so it's important to ask a teammate for help. And so that's what I really liked about that encounter was she was struggling. Yes, she's killed many zombies before, but now it was like she, this one surprised her. She needed some help. Yeah, I that's such a great point too, that even the most mundane tasks sometimes can just sneak up on you. Cause if, if you're not ready for it, you know, if you're not prepared, like, yeah, that's, that's such a good point. And then that, that call for help. And, you know, I think the other thing too, is the no Mac didn't question that either. Right. He, he came to help. There was no, like, you, you got it. You can do this. Right. He trusted that she was only going to ask for that when she needed it. And I think that that's something too, to take into consideration is if you're consistently asking for help, um, you know, that's fine. You can learn from that. But like as a team, it's, it's always responding to the call is important to make the team effective. So yeah, yeah that, that's, that's pretty interesting. And then another, this part might be a little heavy too. <laughs> so Warren and Murphy, they're on the roof and Murphy is just, he's just having a time and i know i am a murphy sympathizer <laughs> but he, all this stuff is going on and now all these people are hunting him and this this guy just can't catch a break okay? he's also not listening and being a good team member got it um but this guy just can't catch a break but you can see that it's like all of these things this mission and just <laughs> this guy's life but his, this mission is breaking him and even though Warren is like, so Warren does something great in the moment, but it's also this balance of great and terrible where she's like, you know, think about how far we've come. And he's like, do you even hear yourself? Like, you know, like he's at a point, And I think I can sympathize too with this part because I've definitely been at that point, especially when I was like just in previous organizations where it's like, I get that there's this bigger thing going on and I have so much going on in here and in my heart that it's, I don't care. I don't care about that. Nobody is caring about me. So I can't care about you. And so stop with whatever you say to me, you could be like, this will save the world. I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care. So I think that's why like this moment, I thought was really interesting because, you know, when he asked her, are you tired of saying that? And she was just very firmly like, no. And it like re kind of like, you're like, she believes it. She believes this is important and this is valuable. And as a leader, you know, standing strong in those convictions. And then on the other side of that, then Murphy jumps off the building. And so I think that that was just really pivotal to be like, how is your, how is this mission impacting the people who are in it? And are you really checking in? And sometimes like drawing that hard line and being like, we're just going to keep moving forward for an Addy. She's got it right. She's going to get that signal tower built. She's going to find you. She's going to get instructions. So it just, it's, it has nothing to do. I don't believe it has anything to do with like resilience or any of this other stuff. It's just like where people are in their life at that time, the other things that they have going on, there's so much holistically that makes up how we show up that if as leaders, we're not attuned to somebody could really be suffering. Right. And in this case too, not too long ago, he was trying to do his own thing. Right. It seemed like he was having a great time trying to like set up this bar thing and he's laughing and, and, and all of that, but it's like, but we don't know when that kind of breaking point will come. And so how do we, remain just open to that as leaders and know how to help people when that kind of help is beyond our help, right? Like it's not, that is beyond us. So how do we get people that kind of help? Yeah. I, I think the point that you bring up about like that sort of help is beyond us, I think is the important thing too, is being aware enough to know because I am the last guy that you want to talk to, like talk through some some deep, heavy, emotional stuff, I am going to break further, right? So it's like, I think you also have to have like the self-awareness as well. Like you can reach a point where you you are going to do more harm than good and that it's okay to like, you know, direct that. Direct. But, I, and I don't think that's just something as heavy as like some of the psychological stuff that um, Murphy's going through. I think it's also really important, like 
because a lot of times I see a lot in my profession where people will sort of make a guess, even if it's something as simple as like, um, hey, is is my PTO, uh, you know, c- can I take that or, or this holiday, right? Like um, there's a holiday coming up. It's a float holiday. Can I, do I have to take that as all eight hours or can I take that in four hour chunks, right? And people will guess. They'll go off of an old organization or something, and they'll say, "Oh, you, you, you have to take it as eight hours." And maybe you don't. You only take it as you can take it in, you know, four-hour chunks or hour chunks. Or um, it's like uh, you can't float it at all or something. You have somebody stuck there where they don't want to. And if you would have just taken the time to realize, like, there's an entire um, like uh, like people leader or like human resources or whatever you call it organization that knows that information in and out, like that's their job. If you just would have directed them there instead of like trying to be like, you know, all and take that mm-hmm. position. Cause what you did was now when they find out, Oh no, I could have done this or that. You, you look like a complete idiot. They're going to trust you with, with pretty much nothing ever again. Right. It's got, or it's going to be really hard to gain that trust back when they're going to come to something with you like that. So I, I think that that's, um, I think that's important too, right? It's like knowing when it's okay. I don't know, but here's that resource or I don't know, let's figure that out together. Um, and you don't just always have to come out of the pocket with the, with the answer, right? So I think that's pretty important. I do want to address, I agree. And I, I, I want to address to the piece of the lost trust. I think it's easy to gain that trust back in that when then someone comes to you with something, the new information or something to acknowledge that your information was outdated or just wrong, right? But just acknowledge and no excuses for it. Be like, oh well, my past organization. Who cares? Yeah, I, I was wrong. I'm sorry about that, right? You know, and and so thank you for letting me know that this is the information. I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. And I think that a lot of people don't do that either. So there's like this whole like thing around like how we build trust, and like Charles Feltman wrote this really great book called The Thin Book of Trust. And in it, he had these four distinctions. And so it was like, do I trust that you uh, are reliable? Do I trust that you're sincere? Do I trust that you're competent? And do I trust that you care? And we're essentially assessing people on these four things when we're looking at trust. And so I think that, and, and you can be missing one of them and not have others. Like I've definitely worked with people who I believe that they wanted to do what they said they did. <laughs> I believe that they could do it. And I do believe they cared about the team. Did they show up? That's another story, right? But it was one of those things that where I trusted those other aspects. So I think that when there's something that comes up that we do break trust, that it's like as leaders to assess and be like, oh, I gave you bad information. What is the first thing I can do? I can tell you, I can admit to that, right? It's not, it's not a secret, you know. <laughs> so can I just admit to what it was? Because that also shows that sincerity and that care and it can help build that future reliability. But I think also there's a thing we were talking about earlier that like the great man theory, where it's like, don't ask questions, think you know all the answers that has led leaders down this thing where it's like, just give them an answer. Like never say, I don't know, which is completely toxic and inappropriate because it's it's not your job to know all those things. It's your job to know how to find those answers, but it's not your job to know all of those things. And like you said, information changes all the time. Like policies can be outdated. So if you point someone to something and then be like, oh yeah. And when you find out, let me know. Cause then, you know, that's also a way of, of you informing without also, that also helps someone else and not just tasking them to grab information. That was yeah, a that's, lot. <laughs> no, that's, a good, that's a good point. I was just, I was just thinking of myself when you were like, Oh, you could just, you know, you just approach that you're wrong. And I'm like, you never admit that you're wrong ever. Uh, no, um, burn the building and all evidence before admitting <laughs> that you were wrong. Um, uh, no, I, uh, yeah, that's, that's a really great point though. But yeah, it, it, to that end, I, I think the other thing that's pretty interesting right now is you had Addie who cried out for um, help. You know what I mean? And then you came to her aid. Doc is faced off with this, uh, an individual who's coming after him and is choking him. He's on the ground. He's clearly struggling. Uh, Your favorite uh, character who has defrauded one of the oldest uh, institutions in uh, the United States is hiding in the closet. Doc, somebody who has been 
always very sympathetic, or I would argue the most sympathetic to Murphy um, on a human level, has treated him as a human the most, is is at, at literally in the show having an out of body experience as his essence is floating above him being strangled by this bad guy. Murphy is continuing to hide in the closet, does not come out and help. That guy mm-hmm. is fully engaged with his hands on Doc. Could have easily snuck up behind him, knocked him out, not even asked him to do anything bad. Just get him off of Doc, let him get a second breath. Does not do it until after the bad guy uh, is now turned into a zombie to be mercied, does Murphy run out of the closet. And it's like, this guy. But um, that. But then you talk about different teammates, right? Strengths and weaknesses or anything. Mac ran to Addy, no questions asked. Murphy, Doc could physically not say he needed help, but it was overly apparent. Murphy did nothing. So it's just like, you know, not being that team player is not always the, the greatest thing in the world. Agreed. I'm about to sound like I'm going to defend Murphy again. <laughs> Let's go to his defense. <laughs> so you're absolutely right. Like, let me say that you are absolutely right. When your team members need you, you help them, right? In any way that you can, especially if it's something that is a strength of yours. And it's not that there hasn't been trust built and all that. Like you said, like Doc, I think is as far as anyone on that team is the closest to Murphy's friend. And so it's, uh, yeah, so that absolutely is insane. (laughs) It is inappropriate that he did not try to jump in and help Doc. I think that there is this element of how we expect people to show up. And this is in general, this is not just Murphy. Um, where we view things where it's like, oh, I would never, or I would do this. And then it's like, we expect that from everyone else. And so I've definitely had those times where it's like, I know that I'm supposed to come to work every day. Turns out my coworkers didn't get that memo at any point, (laughs) right? Previous organization, obviously. But it's one of those things too, where I think that like our inner expectations there are some things that like, it's a values match, right? And I think we've talked about that before, this values match, this worldview match that helps us stay together as a team. And sometimes you have people on the team who are like, they bring something that nobody else can bring. And so you're like, okay, they don't have the same values match, but we still need them for these different things. But then that's what causes the team to go from performing back to storming. So it's like, it's, it's these kind of like rogue team members that cause the team to kind of always be in flux. So while in that situation, you are right. Murphy was wrong. He should have helped out. (laughs) But also just like as leaders to be like, when I say that this thing needs to happen, or if I expect this thing to happen, where does that expectation come from? And do I just expect it of me or do I expect it of everyone else? And even if I expect it of everyone else and I voice it, is that realistic? Like, can they do that? Murphy is, I'm about to say this, he's a coward, right? Like that's part of like his, who he is as a character right now. He just doesn't know how to like really advocate for himself, other people, how to be a good team member. And so asking him to do that is asking him to do something that's impossible for him. All very valid, um, very valid. A lot of words to say uh, you defend uh, Murphy, but all very valid points. But I guess, and you know what, you're right. I don't, I don't disagree with anything you said. I just, and maybe this is a difference in like somebody who's been leading for a while and somebody who's just starting out leading. Like, you know, it, you, from a people perspective, right, is... Um, I've seen him do harder, worse, um, more dangerous in the past for less, right? The, the life of, and so maybe that just goes back, like you said, to his, who he is as a person as kind of being a little bit more cowardly, maybe because there's a lot on the line beside himself. Like that's what caused him to, to freeze up, but it's, um, yeah, I think that that's, that's the struggle for me is, 
the consistency of performance. And maybe that's being too dehumanizing. Maybe I'm just as guilty of treating Murphy less as a person. And it's like, I've consistently seen you do X, Y, Z tests. It takes you this long, though. I realize there's variations in everything. It is a safe assessment to make the estimation. You will be able to do X, Y, Z in a given set of time. So maybe it's just being too literal with, with an interpretation. But yeah, I, I, I think that that's interesting. My other favorite thing too is get a wildly different rogue guy in here, El Scorpion, who's, you know, popping up and has just been hanging out in the background watching everything happen and was also the trigger of the event with the rocket launcher thing to sort of start the major fight and has literally just been doing what I would do, not that I would lead a narcotics kingpin organization type thing, but like he's assessing those teams to see who's stronger, who's weaker, to understand the competition, to understand what's the best way to get this, uh, the Murphy, right? How do I get him? Who's going to have him and move on from there? So he's eliminating all, comp letting the competition eliminate themselves to come in and just, um, you know, sort of take over the, the best team there. So I think that that's like a really interesting sort of little piece that's hanging out there. I agree. Yeah, he's a uh, leadership wise, the ability to do recon to like, let me see what I can what rocks I can move, which ones I need to look underneath, all of that, like just that piece of, yeah, what is the situation here before I make a decision? So I do appreciate that, just all these different vantage points that he has. So, and then I think also Vasquez, even though we met him in the last episode, in this one, he starts to become like a de facto member of the team out of the necessity that he's kind of realizing that this Murphy guy, this is not going to be as easy as I thought it was. Already has a relationship with these folks. Let me just tag on with these folks. So it's like this like necessity. He's not what I would call even a willing member of the team, but he does believe in that mission. So, okay, I'll go along with this as long as it is benefiting what it is, this end goal that I'm after too. So I think it's interesting how he is absorbed into the team he does some very trusting things he does some very untrusting things but he does some trusting things in kind of the way he helps out different team members but also essentially this uh i like to call it where he's like yeah come here but also like don't like you know like this whole like yeah come here but also stay away and uh yeah that emergence of the a new team member is interesting because i think when we do add new people to the team we're not all going to get along right at first. We don't all understand each other, but are we focused on this thing here? Yes. Great. Let's move towards that and see how the dynamics play out. Yeah, that's, that's a really great point. I viewed him as being like, he was an individual contributor. Like uh, he was his own, you know, just a uh, uh, dude on a mission. And then like you said, and it's also, I, I think it's interesting too, because, it's the real goal, but it is such a blue sky thinking sort of goal of get Murphy to California that it's so easy to buy in, to align, to to match every action as being either positive or detrimental to that goal. But I, I also think it's important, like in an organization, uh, if you're looking at a big one like uh, Apple, make a better iPhone, right? That's that's. But the problem is the complexity is in the details you know what i mean like so and as you start to go down from being at the top of this like trillion dollar organization and you're someone on a team there are so many in many cases i think the potential for conflicting goals to get to that make the best iphone because you have a lot of different um leadership and ideas of like some people think that a phone is better based off the camera it has or how big the screen is or how small the screen is so it's like I think organizationally, that leadership piece, this one, very simple. No matter what, you have to head west. Um, not the case with um, an iPhone, right? There's a lot of different paths to get to that that best one. So I think that that is like really cool because it's you're looking at big and small at the same time, right? This is a big focus, but then it's also like a small goal, right? It's it's a weird it's a weird little dichotomy that I think is is really interesting. Uh, 
but I think that's pretty much the that's that's pretty much episode two, right? Mm-hmm. 